What's up and welcome to the Greater Resistance Podcast. It's Brian Hippolyte, a manifest mentor. And on this episode, this special episode, episode 12, I have one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. my, my, my love that I do life with on a daily basis. Uh, the wonderful, the beautiful, the ever so intelligent and enriching Whitney Gilbert. Oh, excuse me. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. I know you got so much to uh to offer, so we just gonna get right into it. Um, you are a behavior therapist. Yes. What does that mean? What does what do you do? Um, I work with children who have diagnosis in autism. So I help to reprogram um them into having behaviors that align with what is necessary for their homes. So if they're um If they have severe behaviors, we redirect them and go through a whole process of just training them so that behavior has been eliminated to a certain extent. I even work with children who have been nonverbal, and by the time that I'm usually done with those kids, they are speaking in some way, shape, or form. So I was about to say, so you mean nonverbal, like they were not, then weren't speaking, weren't are able to articulate their words. Why weren't Why weren't they able to? They were. um, They never learned. And sometimes when you have an autism diagnosis, speaking is not something that many children learn to do. And in many situations, they learn to use a something called a functional communication device. So instead of having words, they will learn to type their sentences out on um, almost like a tablet. Okay. And that will speak for them so that they can get whatever is necessary. And they learn to utilize that in different scenarios. And I would actually teach them how to use that and how to have conversations with other individuals with that device. But in some circumstances, especially when we do early intervention, children are able to start making letter sounds and putting letter sounds together. Uh, It is hard work. It requires consistency. Um, But with the proper, you know, support, I've seen the changes that can have in children. Okay. That sounds like a great existence being being offered to them. And, And... and you're able to do this by what? Like, how do you how do you how do you work that magic? Um, well, I have I work with a someone called a BCBA. So that's someone who would actually write the program that I would work with this client for. So every day, pretty much five days a week, which most of my clients were from five to maybe six hours, depending. I would go through these programs with them and help them achieve it. And if there are behaviors that come in because they have resistance to the change, because they've been so comfortable going through life without being able to communicate and screaming for certain things or hitting or biting or slapping or doing other, you know, behaviors that don't align with just their family dynamic, I help to redirect them and eliminate those behaviors um, just by either ignoring them nine times out of ten, not giving them any attention. We've learned that when dealing with severe behaviors, not giving them the proper attention allows for them to be eliminated faster. When you give the attention to them, you're actually reinforcing a negative behavior that you don't want just because they are wanting your attention by the things that they're learning to do because they can't physically communicate with you. Mm-hmm. And it's that specialty right there that you have, that almost superpower that, uh, that you demonstrate mm-hmm. on a daily basis is the reason why you're here today on the greater existence podcast because there's so many people who struggle with redirecting Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's in their relationship uh, which we're definitely going to talk some relationship stuff we have a uh, relationship class july the 29th 8 p.m eastern standard time next level love get your tickets right now Um, they're available at brianhippolite.com um yeah make sure that you get your tickets plan a date night for you and your love have a great time um but know at 8 p.m that y'all going to tune into a an empowering uh class that is going to just teach you how to go to higher levels and new heights as uh, in your love and in your expression of your love so look forward to you joining us july the 29th friday 8 p.m um for the next level love class but so back to why you're here you are great at redirecting behavior Mm -hmm. to achieve a desired result 
and a lot of us whether not just you know those those children who are autistic a lot of us as adults struggle with ch changing behavior being mm -hmm. okay with change um not fighting the change uh not fighting themselves and and getting out of their own way right. so that they can have what it is that they actually desire mm -hmm. um and so i've seen you firsthand in our in our life um approach situations and not react to them but respond to them and this is again one of these superpowers that i see that you have that most of us struggle with and it's easy to say it's easy to do when it's your job mm -hmm. but i see you walk it out when it's not your job um, so I want to talk. Want to applaud you for that because um, it's a very beautiful thing to um, to have and to be able to exemplify for other beings to to know. Um, but how you do it? <laughs> how you do it? Like how how are you able to be in the middle of something that's not going the way that you want and be so calm and collective and redirect? Use alchemy. You know what I mean? The way that you do, how 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 do you do it? Because it's definitely connected to a greater existence for somebody. Uh, I have to say, it didn't come easy. It took time for me to learn how to uh, maneuver in those scenarios, especially being an individual who was always quick to react, always uh, wanting to respond to something and just giving so much energy and I think at a certain point I realized that I didn't like how that felt mm. and I was so drained by giving so much energy to other individuals for so long that when I learned I think behavior therapy in itself opened up this door for me to say this is what you need at this moment even though mm. it wasn't something I was looking for it was something that was thrown in my lap to say this is what you're going to do so dealing with children who and when I say severe behaviors, I mean slapping you in the face, spinning on you. I've been body slammed by kids. Like it's 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 been a wild ride. And what you do? <laughs> what do you do? Because um, that might sound pretty wild for somebody um, who's never heard of this before. Mm -hmm. um, or um, so. So what do you what do you do in those moments? In those moments when a kid is slapping you or biting you and you've been body slammed by a kid yeah i had one client who was probably about 11 or 12 who was over 200 pounds and 6'2 and i'm only 5'8 so for someone that big to really pick me up and like fling me and that's pretty much what happens to be in that situation and have to maneuver myself out of it and what you do I, I've been taught certain techniques to get out of it like a lot of the police training that they go through we call it PCM um, I know how to put people in certain holes to put them and get them out of the way. You don't say. I do. You gonna have to show me. <laughs> I do. You gonna have to show me. I wanna see. <laughs> I wanna see about these holes. You know. <laughs> I don't. I don't wanna do you like that. No, I wanna see. <laughs> I don't wanna do you, you gonna, like that. You gonna have to show me. I want that greater resistance. That's not the existence that you wanna. <laughs> I don't think because it's not comfortable <laughs> at all. But, um. Okay. So. When it's not that extreme mm -hmm. and it's the slapping or the biting or the, the even, you know, the yelling and all, all that. The how? yelling to me is something easy to deal with. It's, and even being bitten by an individual and not having to flinch in that moment and looking them in the eye and not making any reaction whatsoever as they're biting you and pulling your skin. I've been biting, bit on my breast. I've been bit every, like, and I can't show any emotion. Why not? Because that's te what they're wanting is a reaction out of you. And my job is not to give it to you. Because they want some form of attention. They want something from you. And especially if you're teaching someone that they need to learn to use their words in order to get what they want. And not to brutalize you in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. So by me giving in to them, by giving them a reaction, in those moments is me saying that this is okay. And this now you think that you're going to get what you, you need from me. That's not how it works. Wow, that's... That's a great way to articulate it. And and I hope anyone listening or anyone watching can see 
how those principles uh, apply across so many mm -hmm. planes of existence your own and in the relationships that you have with someone like the communication the need for proper communication the need to not reward bad communication or lack of communication man keep going <laughs> it um it's been exciting because i've seen the results of what can happen Mm. And I think that's another thing that allows me to stay in a space where I don't have a reaction. Okay. I know that I've, I've seen individuals react in those moments and I've seen the clients respond to that reaction. It's like, oh, I got them. I won now. Mm. And now that I know that I can get you to this point, I'm going to get you to this point every single time and I'm going to push your button because I know this is your breaking point. And at that point, usually your client is replaced with another therapist because there's nothing else you can truly do after that. After that. Mm. So let's click it up and let's kick it up a notch. So that same scenario, but we're mm -hmm. now we're talking about two adults. Yeah. What does that look like in real life and in 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 real time with do someone you, not? You want to use our how we react, or do you want me to just give a general synopsis of what that looks like? When you say us, you mean talk about like me, like me and you? Yes. Um. You, we can give a greater like. Sure. Yeah. I mean, even for and and I feel like it's as individuals in, in any sense when you reward a certain amount of behavior when i say reward it's not giving them a positive reaction mm -hmm. any reaction that you give is going to feed that other individual positive or negative in any reaction absolutely yeah your job is to determine if you're feeding it negatively or positively so if i react to your responses of just being in your emotions and and when i say being in your emotions your voice is heightened, you're yelling, you are saying things that you truly don't mean, that is me rewarding you for your negative behavior. Reacting and responding to that. Right. Or going where that would lead you. Right. I think that's, a, that's another thing too uh, in, in, in the relationship uh, spectrum is not understanding that you are feeding into that energy, that, that, that negative energy by responding to it. And that's kind of uh, along the line of that, that, that conversation of knowing when it's a good time to not say or do anything right. at all, which is the equivalent to, you know, you not giving a reaction to that child in, the, in those mm -hmm. moments when we were dealing with an adult, it looks the, it the looks same the same. thing. Communication, and that's what everyone needs to understand is that Communication is only different based on the age of the individual. Your mm. basic needs are pretty much the same in all aspects. It's just your delivery of it. So from you dealing with an infant, there are basic needs that need to be met. They can't communicate, so you have to respond differently. Okay. You have a toddler who's going to respond differently because they're going through a different milestones. And, and every milestone, the communication is going to be similar. It's just your execution. Right. So even with dealing with two adults who are not seeing eye to eye, you still have to be able to articulate what is needed in those moments. And many times we're not articulating it. Mm. We're just reacting. We're assuming that another individual is going to know what's happening, but we're not utilizing our words. We say it all the time with, with the girls, use your words use when you need something. Yeah. But as for some reason, when you get into a relationship with another individual, we forget that that's needed. Mm. We're not supposed to speak out loud about what we need. You should know that, and especially from know. a woman's yeah, point yeah. of view, it's always, they should know, he should know what I need. How should he know if you've never told him? Right. That's where all these expectations come into play, and which is the the number one cause of breakups, of uh, number one cause of marriages. Or I think the number one cause of marriages is is, is financial, followed by um, more communication is definitely yeah, and, that and that false risk. expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unexpressed expectations. Yeah, and it, it, it we've seen it break up homes. We've seen what it does to our community. And all they had to do was have a conversation. Yeah. All that was needed was some clarity. As you start to age certain things, and your basic needs are going to look different. Each stage of your life, you know, that whatever is presented to you, it's going to look different. It's going to require you to do some evaluation for both parties involved. But not becoming, you know, resistant to the change because change is inevitable. Right. Instead of accepting it and now let's, brainstorm on how we're going to you know execute this now this next level of life together 
that's what it should be about. Mm. You talking that good talk. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. We here, man, a Greater Existence podcast with my special guest, Whitney Gilbert. And we're talking about love, life, and living successfully. All the many ways to get out your way so you can have exactly what it is that you desire. So keep it locked right here on the Greater Existence podcast. We'll be right back.